We're now going to begin with the geometric preliminaries, which we need to study multivariable calculus. And the first notion that we need to study is that of a parameterized curve. Now, in single variable calculus, you studied curves in the plane, but these were probably always graphs of functions. And in multivariable calculus, we need to consider more general curves which might not be graphs. For example, we could have a curve that looks like this. So here it fails the vertical line test, so it's not a graph. Maybe it even crosses itself at some points. And we need to deal with curves like that. So we need to be able to write mathematical equations to describe such a curve. So the way we do that is as follows. So we have x is some function f of t, y is some function g of t, and t goes from alpha to beta. So this t is called the parameter. You could think of it as being time. So the idea of what's going on here is t varies in some interval from alpha to beta. At each point t on this interval is mapped. You can think of f and g as mapping this point to some point on the curve, let's say this point. So this point is the point x, y equals f of t comma g of t. So each value of t in this interval is mapped to some point on the curve. So alpha is mapped to the starting point on the curve. So this is this point here is f of alpha comma g of alpha. And this point here is the end point of the curve, so that's f of beta comma g of beta. Right? So that's the formalism we use. Let's look at a couple of basic examples. So example one. will be x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So what is this curve? Well, we know that points of the form cosine t comma sine t live on the unit circle. So we can draw the unit circle here. And um, at t equals 0, we're at the point 1, 0. As t goes up to pi over 2, we go to the point 0, 1. As t goes to pi, we reach the point minus 1, 0. When t equals 2 pi over 3, we're at the point 0 comma minus 1, and then at t equals 2 pi, we're back where we started. So we go around the circle once. And it's customary to draw an arrow on the curve, which indicates the direction in which t is increasing. In our general picture over here, it looks like this. Um, there. So the arrow indicates that as, as t increases, you move along the curve in the direction of the arrow. So this curve is the unit circle, and we are going around it counterclockwise. And also at unit speed. Okay, um, the next example is where x equals cosine of 3t, y equals sine of 3t, and again, t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So what curve is this? Well, again, every point on the curve has the form cosine of something comma sine of the same thing. So every point on this curve is on the unit circle. Sorry, this is x. And y. Um, so here's the unit circle. 
but there's a difference from last time, which is this three here. This three me means that we're moving around the unit circle three times as fast. So at t equals zero, we're at the point one comma zero. My drawing didn't come out very well. It should be sort of vertical with the x-axis. Okay, and then when t goes up to two pi over three, we've already gone all the way around the circle. And then if we go another two pi over three and go up to four pi over three, we go around the circle a second time. Then we go around the circle a third time up to t equals two pi. Okay, so the arrow still goes the same way, but we're now going three times as fast. So this is the unit circle going around counterclockwise um, three times. Example three, will be x equals cosine of minus t, y equals sine of minus t, and t goes from zero to two pi. And of course, cosine of minus t is the same as cosine of t, and sine of minus t is the same as minus sine t. So once again, every point on this curve is on the unit circle. But now, because of this minus sign, what that means is we're going around backwards, or clockwise. We're going around like this. So at time t equals zero, we're at the point one zero. At time t equals pi over two, we're at the point zero comma minus one. At time t equals pi, we're at the point minus one comma zero. And at time t equals three pi over two, we're at the point zero comma one. So the arrow goes this way. So this is the unit circle going around clockwise. For some reason, mathematicians usually prefer to go around circles counterclockwise. So this is opposite what you usually do. Okay, now there's an important point which these three examples demonstrate, which is that a parameterized curve is more than just a curve. So a curve is just some one-dimensional set in the plane. But a parameterized curve has not just a curve, but it has a parameterization. It's a curve plus a parameterization. And the parameterization is the pair of functions, f of t comma g of t, which tell you where on the curve you're supposed to be at which time. You could think of the parameterization also as a timetable. So if you think of the parameter t as measuring time, then these functions say, at each time, here's where you're supposed to be. It gives you a schedule or timetable for how to go around the curve. Uh, Stewart's calculus book calls these param parametric curves. I think that terminology is not so good because it suggests that there's something about the curve that makes it parametric versus not parametric. But really, I think it's better to think of a, this kind of thing as a curve plus some additional information, namely the parameterization. Okay. Now, one of the things you might want to do is sketch a parameterized curve. So how do you sketch the parameterized curve, given the equations? So the most basic method is to plot points and connect the dots. We'll see a more sophisticated method later. Um, so here's an example. 
let's sketch the curve x equals t cubed minus 4t, y equals t, and t goes from minus 3 to plus 3. So what we want to do is we want to calculate x and y for some sample values of t. And this will give us some points on the curve, and then we'll sketch some sort of guess about what the rest of the curve looks like. So let's make a little chart here. So here will be t, here will be x, and here will be y. And the more values of t we use, the more accurate a sketch we're going to get. Let's um, take the values of t to be the integers from minus 3 to 3. So t will be minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, when t equals minus 3, I have to compute x and y. Well, actually, y is equal to t. So the y column is just a copy of the t column. So I can just do this right away. And now if t is equal to minus 3, what is x? Well, um, t cubed is minus 27, 4t is minus 12, so I get minus 15. When t equals minus 2, t cubed is minus 8, 4t is minus 8, and I get 0. When t equals minus 1, t cubed is minus 1, 4t is minus 4, I get 3. When t equals 0, I get 0. And then this is an odd function of t, so for the positive values of t, I just have to negate the x values for the corresponding negative values of t. So I get minus 3, 0, 15. All right, that's my table of values. And now I plot these points on the xy plane. And this plot will not be to scale, but I just want to give you the basic idea of what the curve looks like. So here's the point um, uh, minus 15, comma minus 3. So this corresponds to t equals minus 3. And here's the point 0, comma minus 2. And that's where t equals minus 2. And here's the point 3, comma minus 1. So that's where t equals minus 1. And here's the origin, 0, 0. That's where t equals 0. And then here's the point minus 3, comma 1. That's where t equals 1. Here's the point 0, comma 2. That's where t equals 2. And over here somewhere is the point 15, comma 3. And that's where t equals 3. And now I connect these points in order to get a sketch of my curve. And the arrows go in the direction of increasing t. Right. So that's how you can get a rough sketch of a parameterized curve. Um, in the next lecture segment, we'll talk about how to do some calculus with parameterized curves. And that will give us more information, which will allow us to draw um, more accurate sketches.